I'm here with Jim Lasky, and we're going to talk a little bit about JVM languages right. um, on the JVM, right. and some of the enhancements which you've been making to the core libraries to support different JVM languages right. in the future. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you, what you do, what's your, what's your day job? Well, uh, the, the main thing I work on uh, on a day-to-day -day basis is the NASHORN project, which is uh, J JavaScript on the JVM. And uh, it's a project that started in uh, 2010, which was about four years ago. And we're trying to find a way to um, exercise the JSR 292 protocol to, uh, uh, to test it and get it be, be more performant. And, and uh, so we said, well, let's, let's create a language and, and see what happens. So we uh, chose JavaScript as the core language because of the similarities between JavaScript and Java. And uh, we built a whole runtime based on JSR 292 in the JavaScript language. Nice, nice. Yeah. I visited the guys in Sweden who, who work on a lot of the implementation as well. Yeah, Marcus and uh, Marcus uh, Lagergren and uh, Telly Zagetti, uh, two great finds they have on the team. They uh, have been working really hard on uh, optimizations in uh, JSR 292, and a lot of work that they've done in recent times to speed up NASR and has benefited, benefited uh, Invoke Dynamic and. Uh, uh, should help out a lot of the other languages like JRuby. And cool. So I know every single JVM language has their, their list of features they mm. want you guys to implement. Right. And we're, we're specifically not going to talk about any forward-facing product roadmap. So this right. is all just kind of off-the-cuff type stuff. Yeah. But what sort, of, what sort of cool features have people been asking for that you're, you're looking into? Well, I think the basic, the basic thing is that JSR 292 is, is sort of a pr primitive way of, of de defining uh, how to call across different languages. So one of the core things that we did was we uh, exploited uh, uh, Tilla's work on uh, Dy uh, Dynalink which was a, a higher level way of describing how different languages talk to each other. Yeah. And as a proof of concept, we used NASHORN as a way to actually test it out. And uh, So that's communication between NASHORN and, and Java. Java? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but in a universal way, so that now that we have that there, we could add other, la other languages and they could take advantage of it and, and be able to set it up so we could talk JavaScript to Ruby as an example. So. Yeah, and no, I remember chatting with Charlie Nutter back at um, OSCON Java, and right. that was like three or four years ago. Yes. And he was, they were brainstorming on a way of having different JVM languages interoperate, because it was a big problem. Right. And I think the thing is that um, Dynalink takes a, lo a long way, in, a, in the sense that you can uh, work in the language, your favorite language, whatever it may be, and call other languages and, and do it in a way that's natural to your own language. But then there are other things that are sort of a higher level protocol that we need to, to, to explore as well. So as an example, um, the uh, uh, ASCII doc.js guys, they're trying to find a way to uh, identify what environment they're working in. Are they running in Ruby? Are they running in JavaScript? Got and whatever. So, so we add, have to add other APIs on top of that in order to... Yeah, yeah. So most people want to be agnostic to be able to interoperate, yes. but they actually need details about what Right. underlying language they're running right. on. And that, so there's other examples where there's a lot of um, server-based technologies that allow different languages to plug in, uh, but they need to have a common way of doing various things uh, so that so, you know, so it makes it a lot easier, their life a lot easier in the long run. So. Cool. So speaking of NASHORN, where have you seen that most used by people? What sort well, of applications you know, it, have folks been picking up for? right across the board. There's been people that have been using it for day-to-day -day things. One of the things that I pushed a lot early on was the idea of being able to do all your shell scripting using a NASHORN. Um, to be able to, uh, do, to do very basic things like you know reformat your files or that, that kind of thing. But then there's a lot of people that have been doing a lot of server-side yeah. uh, server, server -side development. And of course, there's the big project uh, Avatar JS, Avatar JS, yes, which uh, is uh, implementing uh, implementing Node using uh, NASHORN, and uh, but there are a lot of other server-based systems that are that are sim very similar. Cool. And have you guys done any micro benchmarks? Do you have an idea? Well, we've uh, been working in the last year on uh, uh, improvements. A lot of the work that uh, you mentioned uh, Till and Marcus earlier. A lot of work that they've been doing is um, around uh, type optimization. Yeah. Uh, 
It's gotten performance uh, pretty darn close to uh, V8 performance, so. Wow, well, yeah. okay, so that's the benchmark for performance. That's the be benchmark for performance these days, <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, we're, we're, we're quite impressed with what's going on, and, and uh, they've only sort of scratched the surface, and I think they can... They can probably get it even faster, get it even faster. over time. Yeah. yeah, no, since it's built on the JVM, you're also, as a side effect, getting benefits of changes being made to the core JVM, right. which give you additional performance. Right. And, and there's a, basically the, no, the whole notion of like, well, this, what's the possibility of supplying a, an API allow language developers to plug into all of that and, and uh, take advantage of that. Another possibility that we, we, we need to look at is uh, common debugging facilities. Yep. Uh, each language has its a different way of doing, uh, de doing debugging. Uh, different languages have different needs for things like uh, regular expressions. And it would be nice to have uh, a common regular expression library that could say, OK, use JavaScript mode, or use Python mode, or use POSDEX mode. Yeah, yeah. So those are kind of services which all the applications, all the languages probably build themselves. Right. But if you had a common framework, you could leverage the optimized That's implementations right. in Java, for example, in Java and JavaScript. That would right. save you guys some work. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like a lot of this is coming out of your own efforts to build yeah. A I second think you, JVM I, you understand language. a problem better when you're working on something. Yeah. 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 No, that's interesting. So, um, what's the craziest <laughs> JVM feature you've been asked for? Oh, um, that's a toughie. Um, Maybe there's a list of them. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's people like you know people are are, are asking for uh, you know mostly. Asking for uh, ES6 stuff, you know, basically the, the next edition of JavaScript, um, and I think that, I think people are, you know, pretty serious about using JavaScript as their main language, so they want to be sure that the environment they're working is going to evolve. Um, so as far as crazy is concerned, I'm not so so sure that it's crazy ideas. I think for the most part, there people are pretty uh, set on, you know, they want to be able to use JavaScript as their main language and would like to have all the JavaScripty things that they expect. Yeah, but then have it integrate with like Java app servers and other things in the back end, which yeah. they probably already use in their Java environments. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, it was great chatting with you, Jim. Okay, thanks, Steve. Thanks a lot for doing the short interview. And tune in for other interviews at nighthacking.com. We're interviewing different folks all this week. And I believe our next speaker, oh, I can't even remember now. Sorry, Steven. Sorry. Yeah, so our next speaker is on Java ME. Alexander is going to show some of the demos they're showcasing over there. Okay. All right.